Hey everyone, it's Ivy. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing my top 17 of 2017. Some of these books actually aren't from 2017. I just happened to read them this year, but they became some of my favorite books. So I really don't care about publication date. It just happens to be I read them this year. So they're making it onto this list. Actually, I'm also pretty sure that I cheated. I'm pretty sure I have 18 books in here and I did cheat because some of the books are series. Oh well. I should also say that I tried to put these in like the best order from 17 down to 1 and I really don't know how true that is. Just know that I tried. Overall I just enjoyed all these books so but once I get down to like the number one that was definitely my favorite. Well first on this list is Kill the Boy Band by Goldie Mall Davisky and I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce her name right. This book is about this group of girls who is are super huge fans of this boy band and they're staying in the same hotel as them and they end up kidnapping one of the band members and I really enjoyed this book I thought it was thrilling it was funny I made it onto this list because even after I read it I could not stop thinking about it even while I was reading other books I just kept thinking about this one so if you haven't read it check it out because it's a lot of fun I think you'll enjoy it and then I also picked up this year's saga the premise of it is kind of given off as like Romeo and Juliet in outer space but um these two characters they're from different planets and those planets are in war with each other they end up falling in love with each other and having a baby and just about them being hunted and uh, things that they face and stuff like that and it's really really good and the illustrations are amazing and I still have to read the one that came out this year which was seven but I plan on binging seven and eight when eight comes out I read all the way up to volume six and they're just this is so much fun and it's just an easy read and it's just kind of like carefree like if you want something fun and fast check this out like I said the illustrations are amazing it's got great colors then I have House of Furies by Madeline Rue. This book is about Louisa and she goes to this house. This house, when people go there, they go there and they die. They like never leave. This little boy shows up at the house and she works there. She thinks that this little boy doesn't deserve to, to die and she wants to do whatever she can to save him. This book was dark, gripping. It's a gothic story. I absolutely loved it. I flew through it in one sitting. Someone recommended this book to me and so of course I had to pick it up and it was totally worth the while so check this one out. And then I have Beauty by Robin McKinley and actually the same person who recommended House of Furies to me recommended this one and this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. This is about a girl named Beauty whose father comes back to her and spins the tale of this beast and he promised that his daughter would go and live there and so she's like okay if you promise this then I have to go do it and so she goes there of her own free will to be a prisoner. This is probably one of my favorite Beauty and the Beast retellings. It was so gripping and so heartwarming. Beauty and the Beast is near and dear to my heart so if I read a retelling that can add to that story it it's going to become one of my favorite books and I just really loved this book. It, her writing is so beautiful. Then I have Ready Player One by Ernest Cline and I talk about this book a lot on my channel within good reason because it's an amazing book. This is about Wade who enters virtual reality and there's a contest within this virtual reality for someone to find an easter egg and whoever finds it will take over the virtual reality. An amazing story. Such a fun ride. Always and Forever, Lara Jean by Jenny Han and I actually read all three of these this year. I read To All the Boys I Loved Before and P.S. I Still Love You at the beginning of this year and then I waited for this one to come out. I adore Lara Jean. She is so cute. Jenny Han is an incredible writer. I was really happy that she released this third book because it's fulfilling as a duology but we needed this final book for Lara Jean and to be honest I wouldn't complain if she put out a fourth book of Lara Jean's story because I just adore these characters and Kitty is my favorite because she is so sassy and so cute. Then I have History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera and this book is such a heartbreaking story beautiful story I don't think anyone in this world can write like Adam Silvera like he just hits you where it hurts this story is about Griffin and his ex-boyfriend who has passed away and he becomes involved with Griffin's boyfriend that he had when he passed away and it flashes back between Griffin 
dating his ex-boyfriend and then him going through the trauma of losing him and and him and Jackson uh, Theo Theo is the, the name of Griffin's ex-boyfriend and Jackson is the name of Theo's current boyfriend so it is the story of Griffin and Jackson dealing with Theo's death together and if you haven't picked this one up please please do because I read this in like one day it is so good Geekerella by Ashley Poston and this is a Cinderella retelling with a sci-fi twist Elle's father was the creator of this like comic-con-esque thing for this show called Starfield and her father has passed away she wants to try to cosplay for this con uh, comic-con and go and enter herself into this contest the show is getting a reboot with uh, this male actor who she absolutely hates. Elle and the actor Darian, who she hates, actually are exchanging text messages back and forth to each other, but they don't know who each other is. And so they're planning to meet at that Comic-Con. And this was so cute, so adorable. I absolutely loved it. I can't wait to read more from Ashley Poston. The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. And this book quickly became one of my favorite books ever. It is a book about Alex and Alex's sister Anna was raped and murdered and the guy who did it got off. Nothing ever happened to him and this makes Alex very angry. So she decides to take matters into her own hands. Throughout the course of the story she witnesses some things that happen to girls. I think this is a really important story because in today's light some people still think that it's okay to say oh boys will be boys or she was asking for it because she was wearing that short skirt and I totally disagree with all those things. It gets people talking about that topic and I think that this should be in the hands of all high schoolers, girls and boys because this is going to show boys like that is not okay just because a girl is showing her long legs she's not asking to be raped. If a boy does something wrong to a girl and sexually assaults her it's not okay for someone to say oh boys will be boys no there should be punishment no one should be raped no one should have to feel those feelings or go through that trauma and this book hits that so hard and I think everyone should absolutely pick this book up it is an amazing an amazing gripping story of the gentleman's guide to vice and virtue by Mackenzie Lee and this book oh my gosh is so funny so good it is historical fiction with paranormal aspects and is about Monty who is this sassy narrator his best friend Percy and then his sister Felicity and it is about them traveling throughout Europe and the dangers and troubles that they encounter I listened to this one on audiobook and the audiobook is fantastic five out of five I absolutely loved it definitely check this one out and if you are planning on reading it I highly suggest the audiobook because it is absolutely amazing then I have Carvel by Stephanie Garber and this book is about two sisters Scarlett and Tella and there is this carnival that travels all around and it only comes to one place once and they really 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 want to go they end up getting invited and Tella is actually kidnapped and it is the story of Scarlett trying to find Tella. In the car of all things happen and you don't know if they're real or they're part of the show. And that was the most gripping part of the story is I could never figure it out. I was like, is this person really dying or is it part of the show? What's going to happen? It's extravagant from the very beginning. Like, you're going to be hooked. Stephanie Garber is an incredible writer and this was her debut novel. And I can't wait to read Legendary this year because I know it's going to be fantastic because it's following Tella who her free spiritedness is just so much fun and I can't wait to read from her perspective. Then I have My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This has got to be my favorite cover of all time because this cover is it's incredible. Like just look at it. It's about two high school best friends, Abby and Gretchen. And as normal high school girls, they go off to have fun, have a fun night and something happens out in the woods to Gretchen and when she comes back she's not herself. Abby starts to notice these changes about Gretchen and she just starts on this downward spiral. It turns out that she got possessed that night out in those woods and Abby is the only person that sees it. People think that Gretchen is falling into drugs and stuff like that but that's not true. Gretchen starts doing these really mean things to all of the people around them and Abby is trying to save her. This book quickly became one of my favorite books of all time because while it is hilarious because it it's 
it really is funny. I don't want to say it's scary because it's not, but there's a lot, there's some gross stuff that happens in this book. And honestly, that was one of the reasons why I really loved it is because I literally was like, ew, this book is about real friendship and friends being there for you through thick and thin and sticking it out and wanting to see you get better. And Abby, seriously has to be the best friend in the entire world except for mine I just highly 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 recommend this because if you want something funny something captivating and about true friendship this is gotta gotta be the pick for you and I read this during Halloween so I would kind of recommend that but to be honest you could pick it up at any time but it was so fantastic and this is where my cheating begins because I'm gonna talk about all three of these books together so I have six of crows crooked kingdom and the Language of Thorns, all by Lee Bardugo. I read this one earlier this year and then I kind of forgot everything that happened so I picked it up again but I picked it up on audio. The audiobook for this is so 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 good. It is a full cast. It is amazing. And then I audiobooked Crooked Kingdom. I did not audiobook The Language of Thorns. I read it physically because of the illustrations. And this book is so beautiful on the inside and on the out. My favorite story in this was The Witch of Duva. To these two, um, I did love the Grisha trilogy. And I I do think that you should read them in order as, as how she released them. Even though you don't have to read one to read the other. But I just think you'll get more from the story that way. These books break you. That's pretty much it. They're going to break you. But you're going to love it. So pick them up. I have these two companion novels, The Star Touch Queen and A Crown of Wishes by Roshni Chachki. And gosh, I never know if I'm saying her name right. Her writing is so delicate and so lyrical and so descriptive and delicious. I cannot wait to read another book by her because I don't think anyone in this world writes like she does. It is so finely tuned. It is incredible. The Star Touch Queen is basically like kind of like a Hades and Persephone retelling. Maya's curse that she will have marriage based of death and destruction and that's kind of all I want to say because I just really really want you to pick these up and this is a companion novel. You could read this one first or you could read this one first. I read this one first. This follows Maya's sister and her love story but that oh, gosh I can't even I, I just really 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 hope you guys pick these ones up because they were so good. Then I have Sarah J. Mass, The Court of Wings and Ruin, and I know you guys all saw this coming because she's my favorite of all time. She's incredible. The best. This book starts off with Farah back in Tamlin's house, and as we all know, we all hate Tamlin, so that sucks, but um, I think it starts off with a huge bang. I think it starts off with a lot of adventure and a lot of action, and I really loved that. This is the continuation of Farah and Rhysian's story, and this is them in their final battle to win over all the courts. This is just that final war. A lot of people were like wishing that this book wouldn't have been as long as it was, but I totally disagree. I loved every second of this. It was amazing. There are some new relationships that are kindling in this book. Overall, I think it was an amazing ending to that trilogy, even though it's not really because we get that novella that's coming out in May. Five out of five stars. Sarah's writing is so delicious, so decadent. I just eat it all up. I love it. I have a 2018 release that I read in June because I had an advanced reader's copy of and that was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Wow. I don't even know what to say about this book because it is so incredible. Holly Black, it is true what they say about her. She is the queen of fairy. If you haven't read any of her stuff before, I highly recommend that you do. There's characters from her previous books that we do see show up in this world because it's kind of all the same like land. And while you don't have to read those books in order to read this one, being a longtime fan and seeing them in here was so much fun and it just added so much oomph to the story. And this book is about Jude who is a human girl and uh, a fairy comes over and mur murders her parents and because he is the father of her half sister who is half fae and he wants his daughter back. Feeling guilty he takes Jude, her older sister and her twin sister back to the fairyland with her and this is about 
Jude wanting to become as ruthless and reckless as the fairies and her getting involved with the prince. Jude starts finding some things out about what's going on in this kingdom and she thinks she can be the one to solve it. My number one read for this year, I'm sure if you followed my channel, everybody saw this coming, is Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Mass, and this is the companion novel to Empire of Storms. This novel follows Kaol, Irene, and Nezrin in the southern continent and this is the book we all needed. Whether you want to admit it or not, we needed this because this ties in so many loose ends and it, it's just incredible. And Kaol's healing journey is, it's mesmerizing and Irene is such a strong woman and I just adore her. I've already read this book two times this year, that's how incredible it is. It's, it's just, it's amazing. It's going to take you on a journey, kind of like if you've read Air of Fire, it's the same kind of vibes as Air of Fire, but... I feel like there's more information that's dropped on you in this one than Air of Fire more so, like with within the Vogue and stuff like that, but you're introduced to a new kingdom, you're introduced to a new land, so there's a lot of world building in this one, and I really enjoyed that. I think Sarah J Mass is such a descriptive writer. Kale's healing journey was incredible, and meeting the new characters and following Nezrin on her new adventure is just, it's amazing. This book was one of the best books that I've ever read. I'm so happy that Sarah wrote it because this is, a, like I said, this is a story that we all needed. Whew, that was a lot. So, as you can tell, I read a lot of great books this year. I loved all of these books. I actually, like I said, I had such a great reading year this year. I read 117 books. Kind of 118 because I did finish one in January, but I read like 90% of it in December. I got lucky because a lot of them were amazing stories. If you read any of these books, let me know in the comments down below which was your favorite book of this year. If you liked any of the books that I read, let's talk about them together. 2017 was an amazing year. I met so many great authors. I went to BookCon for the first time and I'm going again in 2018 and I got to meet Sarah J Mast three times. So 2017 was a great year. If 2018 is gonna be anything like 2017, I can't wait. If you guys like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye.